Andrea Bargnani and the Raptors into Miami to take on his old teammate, Chris Bosh, although Bosh was in a suit and unavailable, as was Dwayne Wade, who had a migraine. So two of the big three missing for Miami. Fortunately, Mike Miller was available and willing and hot. And looks like he got back to being Mike Miller again, guys. Knocking down money balls. Yeah, happy for Mike. Uh, LeBron missed a couple games with his ankle, and I think that helped Mike kind of get a rhythm a little bit, and he's finally got into being himself tonight, making shots and making plays off the dribble as well. See him knocking down threes. You saw that floater a moment ago, second quarter. Mike Miller was out of his gourd. LeBron with the spike on one end, and it's <laughs> Miller toeing the line on the other. Miller had 22 points in the second quarter alone. Miami up by 28, third quarter. It's the king. Well, you would think somebody would try to step up and take a charge, You would baby. think everybody would step <laughs> up. That's the king, man. <laughs> Bargnani knocks down a three there. He had 28 on the night. And then watch DeMar DeRozan fly into your screen. He's stacked. You could do stuff like that. Yes, I could. Yeah. <laughs> but that guy there, I mean, he's one of my, you know, the most improved this year, too, man. He's one of those guys that's having a real breakout year. See the kind of athleticism that's going to bring him back to the dunk contest on All-Star Weekend. And the Raptors, to their credit, got it back within 10. Call watch Jose Calder. <laughs> Ooh, it's called a power jab at home, folks. Come on, Rio. Don't do that man like that. Ha! Ah! Oh. Back up. <laughs> but you got to make the shot. Mario Which Chalmers. He did. <laughs> Mario and Chalmers the, somehow oh. willed him to the Don't floor. Don't jog it off, man. Don't <laughs> it's like a Jedi mind trick yes. more than a jab step. This is LeBron coast to coast finishing off the wraps with 38 points, 11 boards, and six assists on the night. Miller easily exceeds his season totals per points with 32 on the evening. Afterward, the King talked about breaking their four-game losing streak with Jason Jackson. Uh, we know we had to come out aggressive from the beginning. Um, our last four games, we lost the first quarter, you know, and it, and it resulted in us losing every last game. So uh, we came out with the mindset that we need to win this first quarter first, and then we're about the rest of the game after that. It was nice to see some of the guys that had to step in for Chris, step in for Dwayne, and do it. Uh, just a feeling on particularly Mike Miller in his game tonight. Uh, We've just been harping, just staying on Mike every day, just, just catch and shoot, catch and shoot. You know, uh, once your Jay get going, then you can do other things. And, you know, he got his three ball going today, then you start seeing him get layups, uh, start seeing him making plays for other people. So, um, you know, I told him, uh, you know, we've been expecting you, you know, and I, he's happy to be relevant again in this league, man. It was a great show by him. It was Miller's biggest offensive outburst since April of 2008, and he went on a bona fide bucket binge in the second quarter. A franchise record with 22 points on 8 of 12 shooting. He was 5 of 8 from the three-point stripe in that second quarter alone. Stack, you were down there to start the season in Miami. You knew they were waiting around for him. What's it going to mean to this team down the stretch? Not that he's going to give them 30 every night, but what can he give them? I mean, it's huge. I mean, this is why Pat Riley and what Eric Spoelstra envisioned when they signed Mike Miller to a five-year deal. A guy that could space the floor for Dwayne Wade and LeBron James. And, you know, unfortunately, he, you know, got, had the hand injury. You know, got me a couple checks, so I can't be too mad about that. But, um, you know, this is, this is who he could be. He can be a guy that really makes a difference for them in the playoffs. And I'm glad that, like I said, it was unfortunate that LeBron missed a couple games with his ankle. But I think that time helped Mike get a little rhythm. And obviously he showed it tonight by being able to put in 32 points. Without Wade and without Bosch, the ball is in LeBron James' hands even more than usual. And they call him a forward, a small forward. But he, he spends much of the season and a lot of his career, frankly, as effectively the point guard. Yes, he's the point small forward. So late in the game, you give him the basketball. But tonight, what I like, they put him in the post. They worked out of there. And a lot of us have been wondering when LeBron James can go in the post. Not a small forward that can guard him, let alone Bagnarni trying to guard him. We've been asking low. that for years. For years. But finally, we got our taste of it tonight. He's down low. And with LeBron, James keeps his head up. But Ed Davis sees the mismatch. So he beelines a little too early. But like I said, folks, LeBron James keeps his head up, look at the floor, and look at that quick bullet pass. Joel Anthony, the great finish. This is why LeBron James, in my opinion, and other people go in the post a little bit more. There's not too many guys in the league today. Small forward, power forward, even some centers cannot guard you down low. How can they use that more often, even when Wade and Bosch are on the floor? 
Well, they're not going to play against, you know, horrible defense like the Toronto Raptors <laughs> are playing right there.